Hello, Physics Nation. My name is Nate Larmond. I'd like to do a Khan Academy problem from the set called Instantaneous Velocity and Instantaneous Speed from Graphs. So here's a graph. What does it describe? An iguana is climbing vertically on a palm tree. Its motion is shown on the following graph of vertical position y versus time t. Okay, so remember the iguana is not crawling down a valley and then in the trench and walking up the other side. No, this is not some profile of the landscape. The iguana is moving on. That's the most common misconception. The iguana is moving up and down a tree. So the iguana starts six meters above the ground and then four seconds later it's two meters above the ground. Seven seconds later it's two meters above the ground and then nine seconds later it's five meters above the ground. So the iguana goes down stops for three seconds and then goes back up. So what are we trying to find? The instantaneous velocity of the iguana at time t equals two seconds. Well, um, instantaneous just means at one point in time. And the example I always use is we're going to drive to New York. Okay, so it's going to take us four hours to travel 200 miles. 200 divided by four is 50 miles per hour. Well, that's the average speed or average velocity, but you're not going to move 50 miles per hour for four hours. You're going to move 80 miles per hour on the turnpike and then no miles per hour at the rest stop and then 80 miles per hour and then five miles per hour in the traffic jam. So average speed sort of misses all of those details. It just says total distance divided by total time average velocity is similar. It's just final position subtract initial position minus the elapsed time. But instantaneous means at one point in time. So like at the top of this thing's apex, right there, right there, it's not moving. So that's what we're after right here. Instantaneous velocity at two seconds. Let's see, that's right here. All right, so velocity equals distance over time, right? So we move four meters at two seconds, four divided by two, no, no, not four divided by two. That's the most common misconception. Uh, let's see. Remember, velocity is change in position divided by elapsed time. So yes, we are four meters away from the origin, but then one second later, oh, we're at three meters away from the origin, the ground. And then a second after that, we're at two meters away from the origin. Huh. Okay, so don't get caught in the trap. It did not move four meters in two seconds. Its position is four meters above the ground at two seconds. Uh, I wonder if that's a distractor. Now, now I want to see. Hang on. Is that one of a uh, distractor is one of the wrong answers in uh, teacher language? It's this set, and sorry, t equals two seconds. So, oh, they've missed a golden opportunity. Salman Khan, what is your problem? Four divided by two is what half of America is going to say, two meters per second. They blew it. Uh, within these distractors, well, yeah, uh, four divided by two is two meters per second. One of these wrong choices should be two meters per second. This is a shame. Oh, well. Happens to the best of us, even Salman Khan. Okay, so, uh, sorry, let's come on back to my work. How do we get instantaneous velocity? Well, it's just a slope, and it's the slope at one point. But because we're in a linear region of this function, it doesn't matter what two points. That's what a linear function is. Its rate of change doesn't change. That is, its slope is constant. You're always changing by the same amount of position every single second, at least in this region. So let's scroll down. Pardon my scrolling. There's my iguana pretty nice. Here's my palm tree. I copied the graph. Again, this is the point we're interested in, but any two points in this linear region will provide the same slope, the same rate of change of position. So I actually went with the um, boundaries of, of this particular region. So at zero seconds, we're six meters away from the ground. And then at four seconds, we're two meters away from the ground. So instantaneous velocity is just 
change in position divided by change in time, the change in time keeps shrinking and shrinking and shrinking. And like I said, it's not that important for this um, constant change of position with respect to time. But that idea will become more important when the rate of change of position is not constant. Anyway, uh, we ended up two meters from the ground. We started six meters from the ground. So two minus four is six. Chub Chub has dropped four meters. How long has it taken? Well, uh, the event, at least the way we sliced it up, started at zero seconds and ended at four seconds. So four minus zero is four. So negative four divided by four is negative one meter per second. And like I said, it's a linear function. So that's the instantaneous velocity for all of these times in between zero and four seconds. Thanks for watching.